Hello everybody, this is WizWorld 100, you're the viewers and I'm the reviewer, and recently I finished a game called Mutant Muds Deluxe on PC. It's also available on other platforms like the Wii U and 3DS. And a lot of people have said many good things about it, so why don't we check out to see, is it that good, and more importantly, is it worth it? I love 2D games. They're simple to play, easy to pick up, and for the most part, fun. It's nice to know that they haven't died out yet and that they're still being made for everyone else to play. Now, what is Mutant Muds Deluxe? Well, it's a 2D platformer game, which I can say with certainty, where you play as Max, a blonde, nerdy-looking dork who has to search for the water sprites. Why? Well, there is a Mutant Muds invasion and collecting all the water sprites will <coughs> clean up this muddy mess. Armed with only a water gun and jetpack, it's up to Max to save the world. Or because Grandma said so, which I find funnier in my head. Granny, can't they just play video games inside the safety of the house? Not until you save the world, dearie, or I'm gonna make you sleep outside the house. Aw oh, man, this sucks. But yeah, that's the story. Save the world from mutant muds by collecting water sprites to purge those dirty mud beings. The game consists of 20 levels Max must go through to collect the water sprites, with each level containing hazards and mutant muds that Max must avoid, hopping through different planes in the level while collecting these tokens to get power-ups from Grandma, which I find out are golden diamonds he's collecting for her. Hmm, child slavery. Nice. To help him with collecting the water sprites, which you can only have one equipped at a time, which I kind of find irritating since I went to all the trouble to collect all those diamonds only to find out that I can only have one power-up with me at all times. Grandma, can't I just take all the power-ups? No, these are all mine for when it's my turn to save the world. Wait, then why don't you save the world? Go save the world now, Max, and get me those golden diamonds. Aw oh, man, child slavery sucks. In addition to the regular levels, there are also these special levels like the virtual boy looking level, because it's all red, and the grayscale level that you can find within the regular level if you have the right power-up to get to. These challenge rooms lead you to finding more water sprites. Spooking of special levels... Oh, did I say spooking? Because there's a mirror world where the mutant muds are ghost enemies that you can't damage without the Ghostbuster gun. And it makes for an almost pacifist run, which is a nice change in gameplay for a while. By the way, the ghost levels are only in the deluxe version of the game, which isn't worth mentioning because most of the versions you buy nowadays are deluxe anyways. There's also a timer in each level to see how fast you can speedrun the stage, which is okay, I didn't particularly care about that, but for those who do, it's there. It almost feels like there should be a time trial mode. When you complete the game, at least in the first world with 2,000 diamonds and 40 water sprites, it's not over yet as you can play as Grandma who hogged all the power-ups, I mean, has access to all the power-ups to make the game easier to complete for those having trouble. Or in my case, reach those CGA levels <laughs> which are even more challenging, and doing this gives Grandma gold medals in her attic, which is apparently floating in midair. Oh, so I was right to suspect Grandma was hiding something. You sneaky old lady, you! You can also unlock the renegade keeds if you know where to look for them. The gameplay overall is pretty standard for a platformer. Solid, but nothing really special about the game that really sticks out. In fact, the first time I saw this game, I had the feeling that it would turn out generic. The challenge in the harder levels is not that great, it's more annoying than challenging as someone else put it, and I agree with that. Well, I guess that answers one of the is it questions, is it that good, and my answer is no. I'll go in depth about my criticisms on it later, but it's more like it's not as good as everyone else claims it to be. But hey, it just might still be worth it, right? Although the level design is not boring, especially with the changing planes mechanic adding some <clears throat> depth to the game, the other aspect to talk about is the music, which is very cheerful, but it's not that great, nor that good. Now, despite what I just said, there is something about it that really sticks to you like mud in your ears, and that surely has to earn some points for this game. So, to keep it simple, I like the music. Something really nostalgic about the chiptune music sticks when I listen to it. The game looks very nice. Although the graphics tend to be reused a lot, it still looks very good, but I think there was a missed opportunity to have one of the worlds be completely covered in mud and the only way to move about efficiently is to jump and use your jetpack. 
you can't deny that that's a thought, and it would give more use to the extended jetpack power-up. Alright, let's talk about my complaints on this game. The tutorial isn't that friendly on PC, as it doesn't tell you which keys do what, unlike, say, the Wii U or 3DS, which only has a few buttons to try and figure out. But thankfully, through the knowledge of common sense, I figured out where the designers decided to put the controls. You can control the game with the keyboard, which is somewhat awkward, or control the game with the mouse and keyboard, which is pretty decent, except I only found out about it when I completed everything in the game. Once again, your tutorials on PC aren't that friendly with specific information on the controls. Or the way I played the game is with a gamepad, which has partial control. What the fudge does that mean? It either has full control or no control. Are you telling me despite working on the Wii U and 3DS version of the game, you only have partial gamepad control on the PC? I mean, what the fudge? Well anyways, using the controller helps. The only complaints I have is that you can't customize the controls because you shoot with the shoulder buttons. Which didn't get in the way, but I would have really liked to have the shoot function on my buttons instead of the shoulder button. This might be different on the Wii U and 3DS, which I didn't get the game on. My second complaint is for the boost jet. Couldn't you have assigned a special button for that? I mean, there's nothing wrong with holding up and pressing jump to activate it, but sometimes I just can't get it to work in a dire situation which gets me killed. And frustrated! You could easily blame my controller's d-pad, but you really should have made a second option to activate the boost jet with a separate button, thus preventing what I said from happening and compensating for possible failure input. I mean, come on, you're not controlling this on an NES controller. You've got lots of buttons on both the console and the handheld, and if you look at the keyboard, there's even more to use, and on the mouse, or at least most mouse today, the middle button. As a game, Mutant Muds Deluxe is kind of generic, and I say that because in this day and age, by the way, this game was released in 2012, the mechanics of the game feel like a step down. I'll explain. First of all is your character control. He isn't very flexible, he can't run or dash, which would have been a very nice thing to have. He can't crouch walk and he can't shoot up or diagonally, but only straight forward. I kind of expect this type of gameplay to be from a DOS game, but you could argue other games like Mega Man does this too and that they wanted to go for the retro controls. So as long as the theme is retro controls, it's okay to not be innovative and or do anything new or up to date to make your game character good. Fair enough, fair enough. I also feel that the game is lacking in ideas and sort of did the bare minimum. The enemies could have dropped health power-ups, which would be kind of nice because you have to go through an entire level without dying, although there are checkpoints which help a lot that you can turn off for challenge, and you have infinite tries to beat the game. You could have made a difficulty mode where normal mode has health pickups and on hard mode no health pickups and no checkpoints. Just an idea. And hey, perhaps all those extra diamonds I picked up they could be used to purchase health upgrades or have heart containers in each level that give you a reason to replay the levels. You hear what I'm suggesting? There's also no boss fights, and I wouldn't really call that a complaint because it doesn't have to have it and maybe it's just not that type of game. Though with an invasion force I was kind of expecting a mud boss leader I have to water down. Speaking of water Watered down, you only have one type of weapon, and I kind of wish you had a little variety with the water gun, like maybe a jet stream water gun that has a cooldown time to refill when you use it, and a water spray acting like a shotgun that does a lot of damage but can't travel as far in exchange, or a water balloon weapon that does <clears throat> splash damage. Do you see why I don't think this game is that great? On that subject, this next one is not the game's fault, but I want to mention it anyways. This game gets a little too much praise from people, and I'm not trying to say the game is bad. It's not a bad game, it's just I don't think it lives up to what other people are saying about the game. Newsflash, people! You're too easily impressed by this. You're making the game sound better than it is when it's not. But what do I think of the game overall? Like I said, the game is not bad, it's a solid game, there's nothing wrong with it. The gameplay just feels generic when I play it, with some nice 2D graphics and catchy music. So, is the game worth it or not? Well, if you're a fan of 2D and retro games, I say that this game is worth checking out. Though the game is $9.99, and with the complaints I mentioned, it just makes it on the edge of being and not being recommended. Ooh, this is a tough decision to make, I gotta say. I mean, I said the game is solid and that there's nothing wrong with it, or at least next to nothing wrong. But at the same time, it's nothing special that we haven't already seen and if not, done better. How would I feel if I paid for this game? Well, I would feel slightly disappointed. You're not missing anything new or fresh, and this is probably why I'm gonna say that it's not worth it. 
I hesitated to say that. I mean, the game and the price isn't that bad, and I still think that the game is worth checking out at the very least. Now, there is a sequel in the works, and hopefully that sequel improves a lot from this game, and hey, maybe this first game is just a stepping stone to test everything out, and all my complaints will be, ahem, <clears throat> washed away in the sequel. Much like how Soul Blazer acted like a stepping stone for one of my favorite game sequels of all time, Illusion of Gaia. And what the fudge did I mean by when I said, if I paid for it? Well, I got my copy of Mutant Muds Deluxe in a Humble Bundle pack, and you should support Humble Bundle because it's a great site for buying games, supporting developers, and raising charity. Which in that case, I would more than likely recommend getting this game when it's on sale. So yeah, I hope you found this video helpful on deciding whether to get Mutant Muds Deluxe or not. This is WizWare 100, you're the viewers and I'm the reviewer, so stay tuned for more! Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more than you can see here, be sure to check out my Facebook and Twitter for updates on reviews and videos. And if you want to help me out, I have a Patreon account, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my YouTube channel and join my Lazy Work Legion for more video game content for you to watch. Such as the videos I'm showcasing right now. Be sure to give a like and comment for feedback and check out my site LazyWorks Creations and River City Gamers for more content like mine. Such as today's video recommendations is... Angel Halo's F310 Gamepad Review, where he reviews the exact same controller I used to play Mutant Muds Deluxe. So check it out! Links to all that goodness is right in the description, or click the annotations if you're watching on YouTube. Hey Renegade Kids! Don't feel bad if you think that I was picking on your game, because there is another platformer game that I don't think deserves as much praise as it should, and that is the ABGN Adventure Games, which I will be talking in... <coughs> In which I'll be talking about in Mike Maverick's Ace Gamer Show in a crossover. In which I cross over into his show. For great justice! Ugh, Mike Maverick, you fu- <laughs> Splay!